Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about five strategies to become a successful day trader. Now, I think when most people think of day trading, they picture somebody sitting behind a desk with five screens up and charts all over the place, uh, reading uh, some type of advanced algorithm that's spitting out information that only they can understand. It's a little silly. I think that anyone and everyone can be a successful day trader. And the five steps that I'm going to present to you today are easy to understand and will definitely be helpful in making you a profitable day trader. Now, if you want information like this in the future or any other topics, feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below and uh, maybe I'll even bring it up in my next video. First, I just wanted to say that being a successful day trader is extremely achievable. I have been trading for around 10 years and I'd say it took a while for me, uh, some, some successes and some failures to determine really how it works. And it's one of those things where it sometimes sounds very easy, but the implementation of that knowledge is where you can prove to be a good trader or a bad trader. When I first started out trading, I was lured into all the get rich quick schemes, the penny stocks, leveraged stocks, and I lost a lot of money when I was first starting out. It's a humbling experience. I also think it's an important experience. And I think before we even really get into this, I just want you to know that if you lose money, you cannot see that as a failure, which is going to be very hard to do. I mean, you're, you're, this is your hard earned money. You sit there and as soon as you lose 20, 50, 100, 200, a thousand dollars, you think, what could I have done with that, that money that's gone now? At the same time, you need to kind of reprogram your brain to start thinking about losses as learning opportunities. As long as you can step away from a loss and be able to say, I did X, and next time, I'm not going to make that same mistake. Uh, the quicker you're going to learn, the quicker you're going to advance, and the better you're going to be in the future. So as we go into these five steps, I just want you to know that you will not be successful every single time. And that's not really the point. The point is that you're right most of the time. Uh, and that's how you're going to become a successful trader. So let's jump into those five things right now. So guys, before we start, I want you guys to write down three things. The first is I want you to write down a goal. Now this can be any goal or, or goals that you have for day trading. Do you see this as a thing that you do for fun? Like you throw in $50 and you're looking to just make enough to go out on a date Friday night or to you've got a video game or you've got a book or, or some hobby that you can finance through your day trading gains. Or it could be as big as, hey, I wanna be a day trader for my, for my career. Um, I want to be making the type of money where I don't have to be in school anymore or I don't have to be at work anymore. I can work from the beach. I can work from my office. Wherever I need to be, you know, that's the life that I want. I don't want to be tied down anymore. These goals can range from anything. What's important is that you write down what your goal is. And I want you to be honest with yourself. I want you to put some thought into this, but write down your goal with day trading. My goal, uh, I, you know, full-time job, I, I've got a wife and I've got kids, my goal was very much like, hey, I just want to make some side cash. It'd be awesome to make enough money to where I'm just supplementing my already existing income and I'm growing money. And, you know, I can compare that with some of my friends who aren't investing and say, hey, this is where I'm achieving. So write down your goal. The second thing is figure out your starting capital. Now, this needs to fall somewhat in line with your goal. If you're going to do this for a living, you're going to need a lot of starting capital. Maybe not like 20 grand, 25 optimally, or else you have to follow pattern day trading rules, uh, which I can go over in another video. You'll need some money to make money. So starting capital can be as little or as much as you want. Different brokerages have different minimal amounts that they'll require you to put in an account to start. So you'll need to do some research to figure that out, but it could be $5, $10, 100, however much. But go ahead and write down the amount of money you're willing to use and know that that money could be gone forever. Number three is the why. Why are you doing this? Now this may sound pretty similar to the goal, but it's not. I want you to be honest with what's driving you right now. Are you looking to make money and make money fast? Yeah, be brutally honest with yourself as to why you're doing this. Figure out what's driving you, and we're gonna use that to align your goals with what's actually motivating you. Now, what will you need to get started? Now, the basics of day trading, a number of things. Time. Uh, many of you may not even have the time to do this. The New York Stock Exchange is only open from 9.30 to 4 p.m. Uh, on a weekday, not including holidays. So you have a limited amount of time that you're going to be able to do this. Now, there are some things that are different. If you're looking to trade crypto or Forex or, you know, on some foreign exchange, 
uh, like the Japanese, Chinese, you know, European exchanges, the, the times are going to vary. But at the same time, you have limited time frames to which you can actually make moves. Like we said before, capital, you're going to need money to make money. You have to start with something, whether that's a small amount or a large amount, you need to figure out what you're going to put in. Now you need a trading platform. Um, I think a lot of people today are using things like Robinhood. I really want to advise you against that. Uh, these platforms are simply not trustworthy. They can shut you off very quickly. If you know anything about stocks, you know all about GameStop and how people would be holding uh, shares and anytime it would uh, rocket to the moon, as they say, um, Robinhood and some of these people would literally shut down your ability to buy and sell. So you could have a profitable position, you are unable to sell, and whenever they open the market back up for you, it could be a losing position. I, I simply don't trust Robinhood. Now, I'm not saying the others don't have that same ability, but they are much more reputable, uh, larger. So Schwab, E-Trade, Merrill, I don't see a downside to using these, honestly, compared to like a Robinhood. Robinhood may seem, oh, it's on my phone, it's so easy. The others have the same capabilities and they're not sketchy. Highly recommend using something else. Now, you need a computer or a phone. Man, I recommend computer way more than phone. Uh, computers, uh, you're going to be able to see more data. It's going to be a lot less likely that you're going to sticky finger something that you're not supposed to. So phone is fine. Most of these brokerage trading platforms have the ability to do it on your phone. For your sake, I really think you should be working on some sort of computer to day trade. You need stock charts, market data. There's a thousand different resources for this. Some of the most basic stuff that I do is just go on Yahoo Finance and type in what I'm gonna do and mess around with the charts how I want them. Honestly, the what we talked about earlier about people having seven screens and a hundred different charts and, and all this information being thrown at them is very tuned to what they want. Uh, you can be a successful day trader with minimal information. And I really wanna push you to use minimal information in, in that sense. Like I don't want you to overburden yourself or else you're gonna be locked up and you're never going to feel like a risk is worth it because you're never gonna be able to process all the information that's being thrown at you. The last thing is um, self-control. This is by far the most important thing that you need. And we're about to jump into a minute into the five steps themselves and why self-control is important but you need to master yourself. Day trading is easily one of the easiest ways to know if somebody has control over their emotions, has control over their decisions, and um, you'll be tested very quickly. And if you don't have self-control, you're gonna be one of those people that fails. I wanna start off with a huge warning before we jump in. 40% of day traders quit within one month, okay, 40%. That is enormous. The amount of people that I know personally that said, hey, I want to do this. And within, you know, a month or a short period of time, I go, hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah, not doing that anymore. It's very high. There's a lot. It's tough. 40% quit. And it's because they don't have self-control. Now, only 13% of day traders maintain consistent profitability, which is a little mind blowing. You, so you got to think of the 60% that keep going. Only a fraction of those are even being profitable. They're just maybe losing less, uh, more slowly. Uh, but 13% being profitable sounds daunting. It sounds scary. It sounds like how in the world am I going to be 13%? It's not that hard. I, I think it will come down to being patient with yourself and keeping yourself to the five things. Now, only 3% of day traders earn over 50,000 a year. Now, for some of you who wrote down your goals, you said, hey, I wanna do this for a living. Like This is how I wanna do it. This is a tough statistic to come to terms with. 3% uh, is not a lot. So you think 100 people all trying to be day traders for a living, three of them are gonna do it. The rest are gonna fail. Let's be one of those three today, okay? This is something that you can do. You have the ability, you have the tools. It's possible, but I'm also gonna warn you, it's gonna be tough. There is a high risk that you lose everything, okay? That's why when you consider what capital you're willing to put into this, I almost want you to view it as you're throwing that money away, okay? That's the type of mindset that you need to go in and hey, I'm gonna use this money and if I lose it all, that's okay. If you are, you know, have a family and kids and you're putting in the amount of money that if you were to lose today, might lose you your house, 
lose your ability to take care of your family, lose your ability to handle any sort of emergency situation, you need to completely rethink what you're doing. We're, we're not at that point yet. Like we're not putting the type of life-changing money in yet. Um, whatever you put in, be willing to lose 100%. So here we go. Five simple strategies to make you a successful day trader. Now, number one is figure out what type of day trading method that you plan to use. Now, there's um, a number of methods. There's scalping, there's momentum trading, there's breakout trading, reversals, and range trading. I would really push you to go to Investopedia and research what each of those are. Um, perhaps I'll make another video that goes into each of those and how to use those strategies. Uh, but today I just want you to know that you need to figure out what your strategy is. Um, this is not something where you need to go in and not have a strategy. You need to say, hey, I'm the, and, and me personally, I go in, I'm, I'm a reversal trader. So I'm looking for trends of a stock where it's going to reverse. So maybe it's going down, 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 and then it pops up. Okay, I've looked at stocks enough to know exactly when that point is. I'm not going into it saying like, oh, I'm gonna buy it here and hope it goes up or hope it goes down. You need to have some strategy ahead of time. Take one and try and learn as much as you can about it. There's gonna be tons of resources. Number two, Focus on one stock. This is where I think a lot of people fail. They look at like five or 10 and they go, man, I love Apple and I also love Tesla and I, I love all these. And they're, they're just gonna get overwhelmed. You're never gonna know, each stock handles differently. Some stocks tend to follow other stocks. If you're focusing on one stock, you're gonna see patterns. So me personally, I use SPY. So that is uh, the ETF that directly follows the S&P 500. I love it because it's liquid. You can always buy, always sell. There's never any sort of failure to find somebody. It's a very liquid stock. Uh, if you're playing with something weird, like, oh, I really just wanna trade Cisco today or whatever, I don't know. I don't even know if Cisco's like this, but sometimes you're gonna have difficulty buying and selling because there may be a lack of buyers and sellers. Okay, so find a stock that's liquid, meaning that they have a ton of people buying and selling at any given time. Any large stock, usually going to fall within that. Um, but make sure that you're doing that and that you're not uh, finding some weird, obscure penny stock where there's eight people trading it. The bid is like $16 and the ask is like $20, okay? You need to find something that's liquid. So number three is to set strict exit goals, both profit and loss. Okay, now some of you might be going profit, we'll get to there. First, set strict exit goals for losses, okay? So what that means is that if you're in a position, no matter what happens, if it hits minus five, minus 10, minus 15%, you figure out what you're willing to lose, and it hits that, you sell. You call it a day, you wash your hands, and you only lose that amount, okay? It's extremely important that you cut your losses on your losses, okay? Don't lose more than you need to. When we talked about being patient and having self-control, this is the hardest thing in the world because you're gonna watch your position go to minus 15, minus 20, and you're gonna hope with all your heart that out of nowhere, your position is gonna turn around and be profitable again, okay? And then sometimes you are gonna see it bounce. You're gonna watch it go back up and instead of getting out of the position, and just calling it a day and saying, Phew, glad I didn't lose as much as I thought I was going to, people will write it out and they'll lose even more, okay? Cutting your losses early is extremely important. What you need to know is that as a day trader, you're going to have losses. You won't win every single time, okay? That's okay. You are allowed to lose. Everyone, like, <laughs> you will never have 100% success rate. The key is limiting your losses when you lose. Okay, so the first step we're gonna do, find where you're willing to set a limit. Now I trade options, which is extremely volatile. So I oftentimes set my loss kind of exit goal at like minus 20, okay? So if I put in $100, as soon as that $100 becomes 80, I'm out. Like I'm not, I'm not playing anymore and I will take the loss and that's okay. Too many times I've watched it, you know, put in $100, watch it turn to 80, Go like, man, there's no way. I, I, I thought I knew what was about to happen here. I thought it was gonna pop. And then not sell, keep hoping. Watch it drop to 70. Watch it come back up to 80. Oh, this is great. Oh, now it's 60. 
okay? It happens so fast, so fast. I can't even tell you how fast it happens, okay? Find your exit goal, stick to it. This is huge, double underline, stick to it. When you lose, control your losses. On the opposite side, you need to find an exit for your profit, okay? Now, there's a number of ways to do this. It's a lot more fun on this side, but I think some people will sit there and hope that everything goes to the moon, right? I'm gonna put in $100 and when I sell, I'm gonna be a millionaire. It doesn't happen like that. If you were to look at a bell curve where people are not profitable and extremely profitable, people that use $100 to make a million dollars, they're so far on, on one side of the bell curve, you can't even see them, okay? They might as well be a light year away. It's not real, it's not realistic. We want to focus on small, consistent wins. Those are very controllable and honestly, not that difficult. The issue is, is the amount of people that won't take a profit when they have a profit, okay? So many people will sit there and look at the green and say, this is great and it's gonna keep going and it'll go back down and they lose it. And that doesn't necessarily mean they create a loss, but they don't lock in a gain, okay? Profit is profit. A win is a win. And in your head, what I would do legitimately, when you see yourself hit a profit goal, mine 20%. You see 10, 15, 20, whatever it is, you that is a win to you. Boom, lock it in, sell it, take it, and go, yes, I hit my profit goal, I sold. Go ahead and look at the summary of your realized gains and losses. Look at the green, know that you turned money into more money, and it's a win, okay? A lot of people, a lot of people harp on the whole let winners run, and that's fine. If you wanna get to 20% and say, this is awesome. If it falls back to down to 10%, you know, I'll set up an automatic sell where if it drops down to 10, it'll automatically sell and I'll only be up 10%. If you want to do that, that's fine. And just try and let it run. Um, the key is though, that you at least take the profit. You want to get consistent profits and that's how you're going to become a successful day trader. Number four is don't get emotional. We've already talked a little bit about this. It's extremely hard. It is so hard. I can't even tell you how hard it is to lose money. It, this is way different. Some of you may be into gambling. You've you know been in a blackjack table or been playing roulette and you know what it's like to keep throwing money at losing positions and to get caught up in it. And, and it's tough. It's extremely tough. Self-control. This is how you become that top percent of day traders. Don't get emotional. Make decisions rationally. Use your intelligence, follow it. Don't sit there and play hopium on every play. If you, if you play hopium, you're done. You're gonna lose everything. It's number four. Number five, any profit's a win. We've already said it, any profit is a win. When you sell, celebrate. Small wins add up. I wanna show an example of this, uh, that small wins add up because it's really hard in the moment. Everybody wants to see $100 turn into a million, but watch how quickly things improve. So what I've done here is I've just created a really quick table um, to show you kind of a, a easy way to see how small things add up. So if you were to look at a full year, like whenever I first started, I had saved up quite a bit of money for day trading. And so I initially said, hey, my goal is to make 500 a week, which for some of you sounds like crazy, right? I'd, I'd love to make 500 a week. But for me, given what I started with, it felt like a decent amount but it also felt like could easily put do a $3,000 option trade and make three grand in a day. You know, it, all it would have to do is double. And if I do a short-term expiration, blah, 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 and I'm, I'm a millionaire. Just watch this. Okay, 500 a day. This is quarter one, week one. January 1st, you make $500 one week. And all that is, you have five days, your day trading, $70 here, $80 here, $40 here. Maybe you lose a little bit, but consistent wins, consistent wins, consistent wins gets you 500 a week, okay? By the end of Q1, $6,500. Okay, for some of you, $6,500 is like half your year's rent. Done, easy. Maybe you you have another job. Maybe you're working, you know, making 40, 50, $60,000 a year. This is huge. That's an instant 10% raise. Sticking with small, consistent wins. So 6,500 a year, let's say we keep it up. Half a year is gone now. Over here, I've got the total, 13 grand in half a year. Wow, that's probably gonna cover you know, all your car payments. Um, maybe you know part of it, either all your rent or all your car payments. 
Um, you're supplementing income. And like I said, you're not doing anything crazy. This isn't some shoot the moon strategy, small consistent wins. And we keep this up, we go all the way to year end, you've made 26 grand. This was my goal, 500 a week, 26 grand. It's a really good supplement. This pays my mortgage, okay? Just paying my mortgage, day trading. And it's nothing crazy. It's 500 a week, that's $100 a day. Can you do $100 a day? Depends on what you start with, but if you have consistent goals and you you stay true to them and you're limiting your losses, winning, taking your profits, it's achievable. And you go 26 grand, you're like, man, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. A whole year, 500 a week for only $26,000. Some of you might be sitting there and go, $26,000, that's, <laughs> I can't live off that. Like if I, you're saying if I'm gonna make $26,000 this year, I have to make 500 a week. Like I can't live off that. I need to be making a thousand dollars, whatever. That's fine. Figure out what this number needs to be. Figure out what it needs to be in order to hit your goal. For most of you, living off day trading is somewhere you probably need to prove yourself first before you quit your job and start doing that. It's hard. Like making that much money is hard and you're gonna be risking a lot more capital to do it. It's very achievable. It's the same strategy. It's just a lot harder to look at a trade and see minus $40 rather than seeing minus $400, okay? Because the amount of money that you'll need to flip that quickly to make it your job, you're gonna be risking a lot more in each trade. The next thing that I wanna show you is how these numbers compound into each other. So this chart, you're seeing $26,000, right? You made $26,000 in year one using this strategy, okay? Same thing, same strategy the next year. You're not risking any more capital than you were the first year. Make another $26,000. Okay, now you've made 52. Okay, by year five, 130 grand. For some of you, this is like half your mortgage. In five years, you've made enough to pay off half your mortgage, okay? So from here, let's go to year 10, 260. At this point, maybe some of you, your mortgage is entirely paid off. Your car's definitely paid off. You know, if, you're, if your goal is like, hey, I, you know, I bought a $30,000 car, I wanna pay it off. By year three, you've, you've done that and more, right? Compounds very quickly. This is 10 years, 10 years, $260,000. For some of you with kids, like you could be setting up funds for education, all sorts of stuff. The further stuff taken is 15, of course, we keep going. But $390,000 by year 15 is huge. I mean, that's life-changing money for anybody. In 15 years, 500 a day, okay? It's, it sounds crazy, it's very achievable. And I think anybody can achieve that. And it's not doing any sort of shoot the moon, it's $100 a day, it's whatever your goal is for how you wanna do it. Small wins, limiting losses. So these are the tools, I want you to take them, I want you to really think about them, look at those goals, look at everything that you wrote down that I asked you to write down, figure out what you're gonna do, make sure you have a game plan, find a strategy to do it, Find one stock that you really like. It doesn't have to be what I did. I did SPY. Uh, set strict goals. Figure out what you're willing to lose, like willing. Throw the money away in your head, what you're willing to lose and where you want your profit targets to be. Don't get emotional. Control your emotions. Know what you're going to do. Follow through with step number three. Whatever you say, follow through. Don't let your head get in the game. Any profit's a win. Uh, take a win. Celebrate it no matter what. Uh, anytime that you have a great win, Take yourself out to eat, Get, you know, celebrate. Give yourself something to be joyful about. Don't just put away every single dime that you make into a box and never look at it. Let yourself enjoy your wins. So that's it. Those are five easy strategies that you can use to become better at day trading. Uh, if you like what you heard today, please subscribe, uh, leave a like and uh, comment down below. Do you have any other strategies that you use? What type of stock do you think is the most fun to trade? Do you have any strategies that you really enjoy using? Uh, share below. And uh, I may even pick up a few and uh, comment on them in my next video. So thank you. See you later.